Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at getting the ham clock running on your Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we jump to today's content, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. Patrons enjoy exclusive behind the scenes content, early access to YouTube videos, and priority email support. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So this is probably one of the most requested videos over the last couple of months. Now I've tried this a couple of times before and didn't have a whole lot of luck with it. Turns out my touchscreen that I was trying to use with this is not compatible with this project. I don't have the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen, so apparently uh, mine, mine's not good enough, I guess. But I'm going to use an external HDMI monitor today to show you guys how to set this up. If you've got the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen, it should work fine on that as well. If not, leave it down in the comments below. I'm kind of curious to see what touchscreens work and which ones don't. Let's head over to the website so that we can kind of give you guys a look at this and where I'm getting these directions from. So I'm at the clearskyinstitute.com website and I'll leave a link to this page down in the description below. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and click on the desktop tab right here. Once we get to the desktop, we're going to scroll down until we find the section on using this on a Raspberry Pi and we need to go through and do a few things. Now I'm going to show you guys a little bit different than what they're uh, recommending here, but it'll accomplish the same task. The main thing is we need a display, uh, we need our display set to 1600 by 960 or larger. I'll probably go a little bit larger than that. Back on the Pi, let's come up to the main Pi menu, come down to preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration. We're going to set the boot right here. Instead of going to desktop, we want to use to the CLI. So I'm going to choose that option. And I'm going to leave the auto login turned on for the current user, which is Pi. We'll check our display here under set resolution. And you'll see that I'm at 1920 by 1080. So my resolution is going to be a little bit larger than what they recommend, but I think that'll be okay. Let's click OK there, and let's click OK here. Now that we've got that complete, let's go ahead and open up the terminal window. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And guys, I will just be copying and pasting uh, some of these commands, and I'll tell you which ones are different. Uh, but I'm just going to be copying and pasting between the website and the terminal window. So this curl command is the first thing we need to run. So we'll paste that in here and go ahead and hit return. Now this is simply going to download the zip file that contains everything we need. Once that download is finished, we can use the ls command to list out our directory. And let's go ahead and run unzip space esp hamclock.zip. Now, be careful here because uh, you need to pay attention to which letters are capital. This is case sensitive. Now that we have that unzipped, let's clear the screen again and list that directory out one more time. You'll see here that we now have a new directory. Let's move into that new directory with cd space esp, whoop, and I missed my capitalization there, esp, and I'll press the tab key to autocomplete and we should be in the correct directory. Okay, the next command we're going to run is going to be the make command. So that's make space hyphen j space three space ham clock hyphen fb zero. We'll go ahead and press return and give that just a few minutes to build everything that we're going to need for this installation. Okay, once the installation finishes up, we need to uh, go ahead and perform a reboot. Now, I'm going to perform a shutdown here because I'm going to go ahead and hook up my HDMI monitor so that I can show you guys the rest of this. But either shutdown or reboot here. 
Okay, when your Pi boots back up, you're going to be looking at a simple command prompt. Now, it's going to be very hard for you guys to see what I'm typing here, and I don't have a way to enlarge this. I'm actually just uh, got the camera pointed at my HDMI monitor, which is nothing but an old television screen. But I will put the commands that I'm using right down at the bottom in big letters so that everyone can see it. So I'm going to clear that screen first. And I'm going to move into the correct directory with CD space ESP ham clock. Once I get into there, the website will tell you to run the next command with sudo. I have had zero luck running the command with, z uh, with sudo, so you may have to play with this and see which one works better for you. But I'm going to run dot forward slash ham clock hyphen FB0. Go ahead and press return. And I just, it says click anywhere to set up. If you're using a touchscreen monitor, you should just be able to touch on that to set it up. Now I'm going to click on the call up there and come down and start clicking the delete key. Let's go ahead and put uh, my call sign in for this example. Now, one thing about this, if you click on the upper portion of each key, you get lowercase. If you click on the lower portion of each key, then you get uh, uppercase. So let's see if we can get this done. KM4ACK. A little hard to do on this, uh, on this screen. All right, uh, if you needed to enter your Wi-Fi information or whatever, you could click on these. Uh, mine is already set up, so I'm not really going to worry about that. Let's go ahead and click. Oh, and it will ask, I'm sorry, we do need to do um, the latitude and longitude. Okay, now that I've got my latitude and longitude plugged in, I'm just going to go ahead and click done. It'll take it just a couple more seconds to get everything going and uh, time for this thing to boot up. Now, once it boots up, you can click on your call sign to change the color of it to whatever you prefer. Uh, if you're using a touch screen, you should just be able to touch those as well. Uh, we can also click to change the displays here to different uh, information. And the same goes with this box and this box. What I do want to show you guys is something that's kind of cool. Uh, so apparently, and I haven't quite figured all of this out, but apparently these are different uh, DX spots uh, that are being reported. So you see this one, it just popped up over here, uh, this VK station. Here's something else though that's pretty cool. I'm going to I'm going to click over here in that box. Now this is different satellites that you can track. And this is kind of cool. If you look right up at the top, this tells you what's uh, coming up in the next 10 minutes. Anything that's in red is an overhead pass right now. And otherwise it'll give you uh, the, the time in hours and minutes uh, until that satellite will pass your area. So it looks like we've got uh, SRM SAT coming up in one minute. So I'm going to choose that one and go ahead and choose OK. We'll give the screen just a couple of minutes uh, to redraw here, but this is really cool if you want to, uh, if you want to track satellites. So you'll see over here in this bottom left corner, uh, it may be difficult to see on this screen, but it does kind of give us an idea of where the satellite is tracking on the horizon. This gives you the path that the satellite is going to travel. And you see that we just came into the satellite's view. So these rings indicate that we should be able to communicate with a satellite. Looking over here, you'll see that that satellite is going to set out of our view in roughly 10 more minutes. So just kind of something uh, cool that you can play with if you're into tracking satellites. Otherwise, you might just use this for different DX spotting capabilities. So I haven't played with a lot of this. You'll have to kind of get in here and poke around at it and see what it's capable of. But this should give you a good idea of how to get this installed and running on your Raspberry Pi. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.